The stage is about eight to 10 meters wide. The bottom edge has a red light accent going all the way across. On the left-hand side, on the stage, in big three-dimensional letters, are the word TEDx in red and Zurich in white. In the background is a large screen about as wide as a stage and around five meters tall. It's a four-way split screen. At the top left, the speaker slides are projected. At the top right, a close-up of the speaker and a sign language interpreter is displayed. And at the bottom right, a transcript of the spoken word is projected. The speaker steps on stage. Feel free to open your eyes again. <coughs> what you experienced just now, that's what it's like to be a blind or a visually impaired person in a sighted world. You would be sitting on a chair in an event hall, and the only way to get to information in this situation is through the auditory channel. The first slide comes up. It's a sketch of an eye against a white background. For this talk, there's someone turning visual information into speech. Typically, this audio description is accessed by blind and visually impaired persons via their headphones. But for this talk, it's available for everyone here in the audience and those following along remotely. You also noticed there's interpreting into sign language um, ever since the beginning of today's event. And there are captions of what's being said on the screen for the deaf and hard of hearing members of the audience who do not use sign language. The slide screen turns black. Why are we doing all of this? because we cannot innovate meaningfully and achieve lasting solutions without co-creation. And that means including everyone in the conversation, regardless of how challenging communicating with them may appear. A new sketch. The upper body of a faceless person against a white background. The persons holding out their hands, palms up. Above the hands, a light bulb seems to be floating. Drawn inside the light bulb is a little red heart. Behind the faceless person, to their left and their right, respectively, there are two more faceless people. Behind them is a large, horizontal, lopsided figure eight. It's made up of three green arrows, all pointing in the same direction. The figure eight looks like wings coming out of the back of the faceless person in the center front. Inside of each of the two wings, there's a partial cogwheel. The slide screen turns black. Something you need to know about me. I love learning about people and their stories. In fact, I was a journalist once. I immersed myself in the experiences of the people I portrayed. Wielding words was my craft. And back then, I started to realize how rich in constructions languages are. And so I began to wonder about languages that follow entirely different patterns than the ones that we are normally surrounded by. That's what drew me to sign languages, which are visual languages. And the more I researched, the more intrigued I was by this world that opened up in front of me. New slide. Sketches of many different signing hands appear against a white background. At the center, a rotating globe. I discovered that there are several hundred sign languages worldwide used by 70 million deaf signers and three sign languages in Switzerland alone. The slide screen turns black. So I started learning Swiss German sign language. And in the beginning, my movement and coordination skills were very limited. 
signing felt awkward because you not only use your hands, but also your face, your head, and your shoulders. And I wasn't used to communicating with that much of my body. And as you can see, I still am not. I also struggled with focusing on someone while they were signing to me because I wasn't used to keeping my visual attention for that long. My role in co-creation is that I'm a researcher working in the field of computational linguistics. So I combine the study of languages with computer science. Admittedly, you have to be a bit of a nerd to work at the interface of those two disciplines. After all, who would spend their lunch break talking about a generative neural network's tendency to repeat text? <laughs> None of you? Well, in my research groups at the University of Zurich, we do, and at, the, at Zurich University of Applied Sciences. New slide. Three symbols appear from left to right, an ear with sound waves, a brain, and an eye. We work on developing assistive technologies in the context of deafness and hearing impairment, cognitive impairment, and blindness and visual impairment. New slide. A sketch of a faceless, long-haired person wearing a sweater and pants sitting on a space rocket. In the background, a starry sky. Now, as a computational linguist, I know about the potential of technology to provide access to information and communication for people with disabilities. But these are young fields of research that rely on the current state of technology. New slide. The same space rocket is standing upright on the ground. To its left is a small box with the word fuel written on it. A hose connects the box to the rocket. On the right-hand side, a tall ladder is leaning against the rocket. Atop the ladder, a faceless person is standing on a small platform. The slide screen turns black. So it's important to be transparent about what is possible because people with disabilities have a long history of being made false promises. For example, deaf signers have been promised fully automatic translation to and from sign language. And whenever these applications were delivered, they would typically just be able to translate a handful of signs. In the area of assistive technologies, the researchers and developers tend to be quite detached from the users. Those of you who have been observing the sign language interpreters, you know by now that signing is much more than just what the hands do. It's also about what goes on in the face, right? So when the innovative product of a glove that recognizes the activity of a signer's hands comes out on the market, it misses a great deal of what sign communication is about. New slide. A sketch of what appears to be a faceless girl with pigtails brushing her teeth while wearing a glove. And besides, none of us wants to wear a glove all day. The slide screen turns black. Knowing about these experiences of the target groups, then, how do we achieve a lasting impact? By co-creating solutions with the users. Co-creation requires trust, which requires time, and a certain openness and comfort in communicating. New slide. Sketches of three hands with different skin tones holding a building block each in a color different from their respective skin tones. The slide screen turns black. I used to work with a blind colleague and in the beginning when I would talk to her, I would always freeze whenever I discovered I had used visual imagery like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, or I can see a ray of hope, because I wanted to avoid using such words. 
and you don't realize how full of visual imagery language is until you start avoiding it. So you can imagine how often I froze. My colleague had a few good laughs and I st gradually started to ease into our conversations. So here, open communication led to honest exchanges and trust was built. And once trust is built, once the target groups know you're genuinely interested in transforming their experiences, they will sh start sharing their needs. New slide. The symbol of an alarm bell with sound waves surrounding it appears. In a fast-paced world where more and more things are bound to get out of hand, people with disabilities need access to information such as alert messages. New slide. To the right, an incomplete stick figure just outlining the position of the upper body, arms and thighs. To the left, there's a text in German. Es muss mit der Freisetzung giftiger Stoffe gerechnet werden. That's where we step in. In my research groups, we work on translating, for example, a written German message into skeletal post sequences of Swiss German sign language that contain the coordinates of key points on a signer's body. The final result is a synthetic signer. Now, the sketch of a person with long hair is superposed over the stick figure. The slide screen turns black. In cases where it's not about transmitting information in one direction, as with alert messages, we also translate from Swiss German Sign Language to German. Eventually, this will empower non-signing individuals to communicate with signers. New slide. A sketch of two faceless heads facing each other. The light bulb with the red heart in it seems to be floating between the two heads. Above the light bulb, there's a curved arrow pointing right. And below the light bulb, there's a curved arrow pointing left. What that means is that communication is always a two-way street. What may appear to be a tool that is important for people with disabilities turns out to be just as indispensable for those without, because the responsibility of making oneself understood is with both sides. The slide screen turns black. Sometimes openly and honestly communicating leads to outcomes that us technology researchers have a hard time swallowing. That what we are capable of developing is not what is desired. Deaf signers, for example, will tell you that they prefer human interpreters in cases where, for example, medical information is involved. In these situations, the human factor is paramount and any technology falls short. So building trust also means leaving your ego at the door. In the sign language community, once you've been part of it for a while, you're given a sign name. My sign name is this, a double opening movement of the thumb and the index finger. And it's a sign for sending a message in Swiss German sign language. Apparently, I was once very quick at replying to messages. <laughs> and this sign name given to me was co-created. It's a result of a group of deaf signers interacting with me and observing a personal habit of mine. And that led me to think about ways in which we naturally co-create, apart from research. Communication is a form of, of co-creation. In fact, it might just be the most frequent thing we do. So let's all continue to innovate meaningfully and achieve lasting solutions by not shying away from ways of communication that may appear uncomfortable. And let's bring openness and honesty into these conversations. Thank you.